So in this concept bite, we have seven rules from Algebra 1 for exponents. We want to go through and discuss all seven. I want to show you why they work, how they work. Okay, and if you have any uh, questions over those, then today is the time to ask. So just to make our lives a little easier so that we're all talking about the right uh, rule, I'm going to number these. These numbers have nothing to do with anything outside of this class. I'm just numbering them the way they show up. So we're going to call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay? That's how we're going to be numbering our rules. Again, that is obviously not official numbering for those. So, um, taking a look here, we want to go ahead and start with rule number one. So, rule number one says a to the zero power equals one. But there's a stipulation that says that a cannot equal zero. Okay? So a to the zero power equals one, but a cannot equal zero. So the reason this works, there's a pattern that happens. Okay? If I take a look at, um, say, two to the fourth power, well, the first thing that you need to remember about exponents is what they mean. 2 to the 4th power means that I have four twos multiplied together. Okay? So that's 2 to the 4th power. And so therefore, what is the uh, value of 2 to the 4th power? What is four twos multiplied together? Anyone? 16, yeah. Okay? Well, let's take a look at 2 to the 3rd power. 8. Very good. How about 2 to the 2nd power? 4. 2 to the first power, 2. Now, obviously, this is the rule we're talking about. We're all saying, okay, well, that, that then is 1. But why is it 1? It's 1 because of this pattern. Notice, each time, I'm multiplying by 1 less 2, right? I started out multiplying by 4 2's together, then 3 2's together, then 2 2's together, so on and so forth. And so, if I look here, there is a pattern. 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. What is 2 divided by 2? So, 2 to the 0 power equals 1. And that pattern would work for any number. If I was using 5s, 5 to the 4th power, 5 to the 3rd power, 5 to the 2nd power, so on and so forth, well, then I wouldn't be dividing by 5 each time, or by 2 each time. I'd be dividing by 5 each time, okay? And it would still come out to be the same thing. 5 to the 0 power equals 1. Well, this is a very handy rule to know and to make sure you understand and watch out for because uh, those of you who are juniors in here um, are going to be taking the state uh, math assessment this year, and you're also probably going to be planning on taking the ACT this year, in which case, those standardized tests, regardless of the standardized test, they like questions like this, where they say, evaluate. And they say, what about x squared minus 1 raised to the second power cubed divided by 4 raised to the fifth power to the 0 power squared? And they say, evaluate this when x equals 2. Okay? And you guys, being very good math students, know that, all right, well, i got to start on the inside most parentheses. And so I come in here and say, all right, what is 2 squared? 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And you start evaluating this out and out and out, and this problem takes a while. Or you could notice that we have something raised to the zero power. So all of that stuff in there is a one. Because anything raised to the zero power equals one. And so really, what is this question asking? What's one squared? Yeah, what's one squared? The answer is one. Move on to the next problem. Okay? Okay, let's take a look at the 
Rule number two says a to the negative n power equals one over a to the positive n power. Now, this rule um, can also be shown to work by using that same pattern we had just talked about. So if you look at that pattern I was just talking about, I had, uh, let's start here, down at uh, 2 to the first power was 2, 2 to the 0 power was 1, and now I want to extend this to 2 to the negative 1 power, 2 to the negative 2 power, so on and so forth. Okay? So we know that we were dividing by 2 each time to get our answer in the pattern, right? So then what is 1 divided by 2? 1 half. What is 1 half divided by 2. 1 fourth. So what the rule is saying is if I have 2 to the negative 2 power, that means I have 1 over 2 to the positive 2 power. And 2 squared is 4. So sure enough, just like it says here, 2 to the negative 2 power equals 1 fourth. All right, so this is a uh, great way of looking at this problem. The way that I like to work this problem, because it works uh, both from uh, moving from the numerator to the denominator, like the rule says, but it also works the other way. If you have a negative exponent in the denominator, it wants to move to the numerator. So I say that uh, um, exponents, just like people, that uh, if, if you're negative, if you're unhappy, negative exponents are unhappy where they're at, if you're unhappy, move. Change. Choose to be happy. Right? Great, great moral for life. Choose to be happy. So, if you have a negative exponent, for example, let's say we have x to the negative third power y squared over z to the negative second power, I have unhappy exponents. I have an unhappy exponent here and an unhappy exponent there. And so, what's our philosophy for life? If you're unhappy, move. Go someplace that makes you happy. So, this guy wants to move down. This guy wants to move up. And so, we end up having y squared times z to the second power over x to the third power. When they move, it makes them happy. It changes the sign. Rule number three says if you have a to the m power times a to the n power, that gives you a to the m plus n power. Now again, please notice they have the same base. That's a to the m and a to the n. Okay, it doesn't work if they have different bases. So the whole point of this rule, or the re reason it works, is if I have x to the third power times x to the second power, the rule says I should have x to the 3 plus 2 power, which is x to the fifth. Well, why does it work? Go back to your rule of, or definition of exponents. x cubed means x times x times x, times x squared means x times x. So, how many x's do I have multiplied together? Five of them. All right, let's look at the next rule. Rule number four states a to the m power divided by a to the n power. This is very similar to the previous rule dealing with multiplication, but now we're dividing. And so in this rule, it says we get a to the m minus n power. Now, please notice it is always the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. Okay? It's never the other way around. It's always the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So, for example, if I have x to the fourth power over x to the second power, 
the rule says I have x to the 4 minus 2 power, which is x squared. Okay? Now, the reason this works is actually the way I prefer to work these problems. Okay? I prefer just to think of it as what is the definition of exponents. So I have 4x's multiplied together on top. I have 2x's multiplied together on the bottom. And I just want to reduce the fraction. Cancel common factors from the top and bottom, leaving me with x squared. Same thing would work if I had a negative exponent. What if I have um, x to the third over x to the fourth? Well, the rule says that I have x to the three minus four, which is x to the negative one power, which then we have to use our other rule, um, rule number two, which tells us this is one over x to the positive first power. So, again, that's what the rule is saying. I prefer to work it by using the definition of exponents. I prefer to think of this as x times x times x divided by x times x times x times x. I've got three x's multiplied together on top, four x's multiplied together on the bottom. If I reduce the fraction, please remember there is always a factor of one left behind. Always a factor of one left behind, so I have one on top, I'm left with x on the bottom. Rule number five, if you have a times b to the n power, that gives you a to the n power, b to the n power. Well, why does this work? Let's say I have x times y to the third power. So by using the definition of exponents, that means I have xy times xy times xy. Well, remember, xy means x times y. So this is x times y times x times y times x times y. And multiplication is commutative, meaning I can mo uh, move it around. That's why 2 times 5 and 5 times 2 means the same thing. So rewriting this in a different order, I could just say I have x times x times x times y times y times y, which is x cubed, y cubed. Okay, so the rule allows us to go from the beginning straight to the answer as opposed to showing all the steps in between. Number six, getting close to the end here. Rule number six says, again, it's a similar situation, but now we're dealing with division. So rule number six is a over b raised to the n power. And that will be equal to a to the nth over b to the nth. Okay, well, why is this true? Well, let's take a look at x divided by y to the third power. By the definition of exponents, this is x over y times x over y times x over y. Well, how do I multiply fractions? Straight across just the top? Straight across the bottom as well. That's how I multiply fractions. Multiply straight across the top, multiply straight across the bottom, so I end up with x to the third power over y to the third power. So again, what's the point of the rule? So that we can go from the beginning straight to the answer without showing that in between. Okay, it's to shortcut our work. All right, rule number six. Rule number seven says, if I have a to the m power raised to the n power, I get a to the m times n power. For example, if I have x squared raised to the third power, okay, the rule says I should have x to the two times three power, which is x to the sixth. Okay, well, why? Well, x squared to the third power means x squared times x squared times x squared. And x squared means x times x. 
So what I have is x times x times x times x times x times x, which is 6x's multiplied together. All right, so let's take a look at some examples of these. So let's start out with just example A. In example A, I'm multiplying two monomials together. There's a word we haven't heard in a while, monomial. There's no addition or subtraction here. Okay, so they're not binomials, they're not trinomials, they're just monomials. And so first off, looking at the first set of parentheses, the first monomial, what is being or sorry, what is being raised to the third power? A. Just the A. So therefore, this means 5 times A cubed. What operation is going on in between these parentheses? Multiplication. Multiplication. In the second monomial, what is being raised to the negative fourth power? A. A. So this is negative 3 times A to the negative fourth power. Now, the seven rules we just talked about, there is no set order in which those have to be done. You just have to use the rules properly, okay? But there's nothing saying you have to use this rule first or that rule second, okay? So what I would probably do here is I would probably deal with my negative exponents first. So I see I've got an angry exponent, so it wants to move. It's in the numerator, it wants to move to the denominator. Now, in that same step, I would probably go ahead and multiply my numbers together. So 5 times negative 3 is a negative 15 times a cubed over a to the positive fourth power. All right, so now we need to reduce this because I have an a cubed on top and a to the fourth on the bottom. Yes, you could use that rule, okay? Yes, you could use that rule. That was uh, rule number four. But, like I said, I think it's simpler. I think it's easier to think of it as just reducing a fraction. I find it much easier to think of this as negative 15 times a times a times a over a times a times a times a. Do I actually have to write that out every time? No. But I think of it like that. So then I see that, oh, wait a minute, if I just cancel out the common A's from the top and bottom, I get one A left on the bottom, right? So all I would show for my work is I would say, well, the three A's on top are going to cancel with three of the A's on the bottom, leaving me with one A on the bottom. So my answer is negative 15 over A.